In this tutorial series, we're going to talk about how to manipulate data frames using dplyr and tidyr. Both of these are packages related to Hadley Wickham, who's one of the stars in the R package development world. And they are both powerful packages used for restructuring, enhancing, and manipulating data frames specifically. We're going to discuss the dplyr package first because its use cases are a bit simpler, uh, though, the, though the tidyr package is also quite powerful and useful. In preparation for our discussion, we're going to load three packages actually, the tibble package, the dplyr package, and the tidyr packages. So we're gonna load those in this code right here, and we're also going to load the penguins data frame from the Palmer penguins package, which we're going to use heavily in our discussion. So if you copy and paste this code or enter this into the R console, then you should be well on your way to replicating the analysis that we're going to discuss. I want to be upfront and note that we're going to be looking at fairly straightforward data frame manipulation examples. Depending on what you need to do, you may have to dig deeper into the packages we discuss, or perhaps even consider an alternative package. However, this tutorial series should leave you with a solid foundation for manipulating data frames. I did also want to mention some of the alternative data frame manipulation packages you might stumble across in web searches or that you might consider for manipulating the data frame that you are working with. Perhaps the best known one is the data.table package, which is extremely powerful. It's almost a direct alternative to dplyr, but it manipulates something called data.table objects instead of tibbles, which are the enhanced dplyr data frame that we'll be discussing shortly. The data.table package is generally faster than dplyr, it's generally more memory efficient than dplyr. The downside of data.table is that oftentimes people say that its syntax is less accessible, so that's certainly a personal opinion and preference. I will say, though, that one of the reasons data.table is not as popular as dplyr is simply because it's not marketed as heavily. So dplyr is part of the tidyverse, which is a very large ecosystem of packages. Data.table is more standalone, but it's really a great package. So it's definitely a great alternative to dplyr if you're looking for an alternative. In fact, the dtplyr package is an implementation of the dplyr package that uses data.table internally. So in some senses, this is the best of both worlds. So you get the syntax accessibility of dplyr with the speed and memory efficiency of data.table. The dtplyr package will take dplyr syntax, it translates it to data.table syntax. The one of the things you need to be aware of is that you have to explicitly request computation when you, when you use the dtplyr package. So there are some slight differences between that and just using dplyr directly. Another useful package related to dplyr is the dbplyr package, which is an implementation of dplyr that works with databases instead of tibbles. If you're working directly with databases, then the dbplyr package may be the package that you want to use to manipulate the data in your database. In your web searches about data frame manipulation, it's pretty likely that you're going to see references to packages called reshape and reshape2. These are the spiritual predecessors to the tidyr package. They actually do substantially more than the tidyr package, but most people consider the syntax to be more difficult. And these packages are not in active development. So they are still maintained, but if you can avoid using them for your project, I would recommend doing so, simply because you're using older technology that's not actively maintained like some of the other packages that we've listed here. And because the reshape and reshape2 packages are not actively being developed right now, it may be more difficult to get help if you're having issues with using those packages to manipulate your data frame.